Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to set up our Visual Studio Code or VS Code environment to be able to support our HTML development. Um, we are going to also install a couple of extensions that we will be using in the future. Uh, one that we will actually be using in this particular video, but just go through the process of how to install an extension. And for that matter, how to actually create a HTML file again, using Visual Studio Code. Now, this video is part of a larger series of videos that focuses on web development and also part of a series that focuses just on simply setting up your environment in a couple of different development environments. Um, the idea here is that you may end up bouncing around between multiple environments just to gain some familiarity between them and also to see the advantages and disadvantages of each of them. So to begin with, you'll notice that I've already went ahead and launched Visual Studio Code. I'd like to start off by creating a new file um, and I would like to create an HTML file. And so I simply go up here in this little tool that filters and you can see by just simply typing in the HTML file extension now gives me the option to create a new HTML file. And then it prompts me for where to save it. Now, this is only a demo, so I wouldn't overthink where you're going to save it, but we do need to know where it is on the file system. And you can see that what I've done here is I've went ahead and created a subfolder uh, called VS Code Demo inside of my EE447 and my projects folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to this particular folder. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and then paste the path. And I'm going to simply call it then sample underscore zero zero dot HTML. And again, probably not the best sample file name, but the idea here is that I just simply want to create an HTML file, put a little bit in it, make sure that we understand how to then view it. So you'll notice that unlike NetBeans and Visual Studio, by default, you don't get any content in the new file in that HTML file. Instead, what you do is you essentially rely on the Emmet Snippets Manager. Um, and essentially what this does is this has a whole bunch of snippets or short snips of HTML code or templates of HTML code uh, that you can use to start off your HTML document. And to access those, you simply go ahead and type in HTML, and you can see that you've got a couple of different options here. We're going to go ahead and use the HTML5 snippet. Um, we'll talk a little more about that in a later video. But if you simply select that and hit tab, then what you do is you get this template uh, to begin with then uh, that's populated with some of the information in the head, as well as the body, and then the HTML tags or the outer HTML tags. You also get the doc type, basically everything that you would get in the other IDEs. You simply have to go through that extra step then of selecting it when you start the document. So what we wanna do is real quick, go through and simply fill in a couple of pieces of information here. In the title, we will again simply follow the same pattern that we did in the other videos by simply providing the name here of sample underscore zero zero, uh, same as the name of the file, the HTML file. Again, if you've used a different file name, uh, basically the goal here is just to make sure that you understand how to do this. Um, and then down here in the body, then what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and just add a P tag and then let's just simply put in some text. So this is some sample text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in another P tag here. And this is some more sample text. The idea here is that we just simply have something now to show for it. Well, if you hit save, um, nothing happens basically at this point. It's as if you were using Notepad or Notepad++, and you've got a couple of options now. One is, of course, you can go back to the folder where you've saved the HTML file. And then if you've got your file extensions set up correctly, you can simply select the HTML file, double click on it, and Chrome in this case should pop up 
with your very boring text in your HTML file. That gets a little bit cumbersome. It's also the same approach that's followed in NetBeans. What we'd like to do is we'd like to improve on that process just a little bit. Um, and so what we'll see is that there's a way that's similar to how you would do it in Visual Studio. And we do that through one of our extensions. So again, what you want to do is click the last icon down here for the extensions manager. Um, we are going to search the extensions and we're going to go ahead and install a couple of them here. Um, one is going to be the... Give it just a second here. It seems to be searching the market. This is the first time that I've ran this. Hopefully this won't take too long. Um, but we have our live preview. Uh, this is a extension that is published by Microsoft. Uh, earlier it was published by a couple of other developers, but Microsoft has now brought this one uh, in-house. Uh, this allows for you to do live preview of HTML and also allows for you to use CSS as well. Uh, to be able to preview what your web page will look like without having to jump outside to a web browser. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. Um, and what we can do now is we can go back to our sample.html and you can see that up here in the right hand corner is the ability now to show preview. It splits the screen and what we have here is then a live view of the text in our web page. And so to prove that, what we can do is we can add another P tag. Here is some more text. And you can see that as I am typing the live preview updates. Now again, this is a fairly new version of this tool. So would expect to see a couple of problems as we go along, but I'm really happy to see this in VS Code. This was a big, big piece that was missing in VS Code for web development. And this is going to be the first semester that we actually get to use these. So this should be pretty exciting. Now, um, you can come over here and you can just simply add other extensions. Uh, probably another one that we're going to want to do at some point is going to be our PHP. Uh, and so we might as well go ahead and uh, search for it and go ahead and add it. Um, in this case, the extensions market seems to be taking a little extra time here. Um, let's see if we can pull this up. So one of the downsides of recording these videos live is that sometimes you get some unexpected delays. Um, and you can see here that our PHP has actually quite a few possibilities. And we are looking for the PHP tools by DevSense. We may actually have to further refine this here. Let's see if we can pull them up here. There we go. There's our DevSense tools. And if you would go ahead and install those. Now, we're not going to test those out in this particular video, uh, but you get the idea. I would encourage you to go ahead and look at some of the other tools that you might be interested in uh, inside of VS Code. This extensions process is uh, going to be used for a lot of tools that you would use in VS Code. It's sort of the model that they have built. And then at this point, then um, we should be set to go with our VS Code environment. So hopefully you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And thank you for watching.